It's countdown time. We are counting down from number 10 to number one at the running back position as it currently stands for 2023. A lot of great debate, a lot of good discussion. Leave a comment. Let us know what running back you're after in this year's draft and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Austin Eckler and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, April 13th. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Oh, Holloway. <laughs> Ain't no Holloway. Bear. What? I don't. Were you trying to go Gwen <laughs> Stefani? Yeah, I think yeah, he's trying to go. Was. I thought you were doing the Hollywood. Was that a as holla holla back? Holla back? Yeah, it was more of a holla back. Holloway back. <clears throat> Okay, um, good start, everybody. Well, Jason was out sick yesterday. We didn't record this show early. This is a record release early morning. As we call it in the biz. <laughs> Thursday. Mike was at uh, jury duty. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it or not. Mike, uh, there's probably rules. Are there? I don't they, they told I don't me think don't there's post. rules to say you've been summoned to yes. jury duty. Yes. Well, okay. Fair. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details. Yes. I'm just saying, like, I only Mike but, convicted but I will, a man of murder, but I, I will get into it uh, to make sure that I'm not selected. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> break the rules to yeah. not be selected. Yeah. I, I only brought it up because I was going to ask Jason to his face whether he thinks he would be a good juror in oh. the event that he was selected for, um, you know, significant uh, crime. I think I would be a very good juror, and I think I will never be one. <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Because, I, to my knowledge, I have never received a summons in the mail. To your nice. knowledge. Yeah. Nice. That's, um, that's I've, I've never seen one. I think it should be directly related to, like, instead of fining you for making mistakes on your taxes, it should all be paid out in. Oh, I love it. In jury duty. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you get the audit, like, I sir, this is fraudulent. You have uh, two years jury duty two, two years. years yeah wow. or I, I just feel like all these government systems should be intertwined like maybe also your stamps cost more oh okay, okay yeah for that letter they go you up send because, once a year yeah they, i'm gonna garnish your stamps <laughs> yeah, yeah I, hear um, you. I thought maybe you would be um you'd be a good I, I thought we talked about this on the footcast a little bit and this would be me and kyle because yesterday you guys were gone but i said i thought you'd be a very fair and good juror but there was a chance that if the courthouse was serving some delicacies with their lunches. You may extend the trial. Oh, for sure. Holly Shore style. I need a little bit more time to think about this over <laughs> donuts. <laughs> if they just serve donuts to the jury. That's it. Yeah. Um, we've got a top 10 running back countdown on today's show. We just covered 20 through 11 on Tuesday's episode. So these are early running back rankings, counting them down. Um, uh, kind of an early overview of these players, the lay of the land. I, I looked over, you know, we each kind of ranked our guys and then averaged them. You guys screwed some stuff up. Per usual. So we'll have to talk about that. But, uh, what else do we got going on? The dynasty podcast, second episode came oh, out yesterday. It's hot. Wide receiver episode. Check that out. The community is over at jointhefoot.com. You get a bonus episode of the show, some premium perks, and, of course, the ultimate draft kit is available for pre-order. The Dynasty Pass is part of it, ultimatedraftkit.com. Quick question of the day. Ties into the Dynasty, Le Dynasty Leagues you're in. Uh, for brand-new leagues, when is the best time to have a Dynasty startup draft? All of the time. Um uh, there's there is it can't be all the it's not all the time right if it's the best it can't be all the time the best is a long period of time though the best is anywhere from 
May through August. I, I, I don't know that there is a reason why May would be better than August or vice versa. Um, Just post NFL draft. Post free agency and NFL draft. You you don't want that. If you do it before that, it's a lot of fun and Dynasty allows for it, right? You can you could do it anytime you want. But if a startup is like such an important event, the the core of the league will be that way for the next six years based on that draft. And when you make mistakes that are not your fault because you just didn't know, every year there's just crazy, this guy got cut or some insane draft pick got taken that you never could have seen coming, and then all of a sudden, major foundational pieces of one or two or three people's rosters are screwed up, and it was just you know avoidable. So I, I would not do it before the draft. That's That's my vote. Yep, I would do it after the NFL draft, specifically because what Jason was saying of the new players, you need to give them a chance to learn the game. And if you're a seasoned player, do it whenever. Like You know what you're getting yourself into, but generally after the draft. All right, let's dive into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, uh, we're getting a report that Saquon will not sign the Giants franchise tag yet. Uh, there's m multiple players that will not. That's the way you got to do it. You missed the offseason program. I don't think he missed it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the Giants don't have much of an interest on signing him long term, according to a uh, report on Fox Sports. <laughs> which... yeah, they pulled back the offer that he had been given earlier. And which makes sense because you look at the running back marketplace and it's like, yeah, no one's no one's given that kind of contract. So they give him the franchise and then he'll be one and done in New York. The uh, the quickest way to get someone to not sign their franchise is have it be leaked in the media that they have no interest in signing you long term. Yeah, I think you could just rent Saquon for a year or two more, right? And then move he'll, on. If he dominates, he would get... He'll get a contract. Like Saquon Barkley, I, I do believe the the highest probability is he gets a contract after this. It probably won't be what he's looking for, and it won't be with the Giants. Uh, and then we have a report that it doesn't look like Aaron Rodgers will get traded before the draft. <laughs> what a mess. It's. I mean, I, it, to me, it's just kind of like not even worth much of a discussion at this point. It's like it's going to happen. I do, we had a question on the footcast. What percentage chance do you think Aaron Rodgers plays for the Packers this year? To me, it's zero percent. Sure. Like I don't think that there's any, um, I don't think there's any chance he goes back there. Right. So this thing's gonna get done. Uh, yeah, I, we we assume so. I think from the outside looking in, and you know, mixing in some of the the rumors, this just it has to do with the Jets' first round pick. The Packers seems like they still want it. The Jets are saying you are not going to get it. And you're going to trade us Aaron Rodgers anyway, so we're going to go through the draft. We're going to use that pick, and then you'll have, you'll still have to trade him to us, but that pick will no longer exist. Any other news we need to cover? How's Deucer's Alley? How are things over there? Pretty smelly. Uh, okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense. I like that Brooks leans into it now. How many Ken Griffey Jr. t-shirts do you own, Kyle? I mean, is it the whole closet full? It's six. Six of them. You have six Ken Griffey shirts? Honestly, I think that number was low. If I had been betting on DraftKings, really? I would have taken the over. I've seen I feel like it's almost a permanent Ken Griffey Jr. Have you reached celebration? Out, have you reached out to Guinness to declare your world record yeah. of owning the most the, Ken Griffey shirts? The beer company? I thought the sure. same thing, but no, there's some people that are way out there for Ken Griffey Jr. Like their whole basement Even now? decorated in Ken Griffey. Yeah. And what? He's still getting paid quite a bit. Yeah, he's still getting well. paid this year from the Reds. <laughs> I like this deferred contract thing. Bobby Bonilla is <laughs> still getting paid too, right? Correct. Baseball. I'm Jason, you I'm got anything here. else? <laughs> no, I'm leaving. <laughs> Let's get into the rankings. Running backs. Well... Let's get into it. We're starting at number 10 today, counting it down. Dalvin Cook comes in at number 10. Individual rankings as of right now. Mike, you have him a couple spots higher than us. 
honestly, evaluating players in this category is very difficult for me. Dalvin Cook, I think, is still a very good player. If you look at the most explosive plays on the field from last season, think about that Bills game, uh, the breakaway run towards the end of it. Like He is still very capable of explosive plays. Finished at 10 last year, right around where we have him ranked. So, you know, there there are question marks about his future in Minnesota, but as of today, I suppose we're all presuming he'll be their starter. Yep, this is this is essentially a I'm in until I'm out, and that seems a little bit wishy washy. But it's if Dalvin Cook remains on the Minnesota Vikings, I will be very very in on Dalvin Cook. Should he be traded to another team, then it's a you have to fully reevaluate the situation. But as of right now, this is the information we have. Just you no know, speculation out there in the Twitter sphere is talking about Dalvin Cook moving on, but he he still has it. He's just unfortunately, you know, like when you when it comes down to the economics of football, probably not worth the contract with the production that he brings for the Minnesota Vikings currently, which is why the rumors are abound. Thirteen touchdowns in twenty nineteen, sixteen in twenty twenty, down to eight in twenty twenty one. I think we all saw that year as a bit of a, um, uh, you know, probably low for what you would have expected. And then back up to eight last year. Six, six in twenty twenty one. What did I say? You said eight. No, that that's not what I meant. So if you go down to eight and then back up to eight, that doesn't make sense. No, no, uh, six and then eight last year. It was still a good year. Uh, I think the days of obviously domination are over for Dalvin Cook. This is Justin Jefferson's team for a long time with Mike Zimmer. It was Dalvin Cook's team. Number nine is Najee Harris. Uh, okay. We have a decent range of outcomes here between the three of us. Comes in at nine, 25 years old, finishes the RB14 last year, which feels like an accomplishment considering how it started. And uh, Mike, you've got him down at 13, Jason at seven. I have him at 10, right in the middle. There are very few head coaches in the NFL, like Mike Tomlin, that actually want a three down, always on the field running back. That's why I have him at 10. I don't think he is a, you know, I don't think he's a top 10 running back talent in the NFL, but I do think he is a top 10 fantasy player at the I, running back I, position. I have him the highest, and I'm a believer in Najee's talent. I'm a believer in his situation. I think that the Steelers' offense will be better in year two with Kenny Pickett than it was last year. You saw that towards the end of the season as well. And if you remember last season, he had the um, injury. Was it was his foot, right? His yeah, his foot preseason. Preseason, like training camp, there were there were videos, you know, of him like sneaking off, climbing this little hill, and then getting on a cart so people couldn't see. Even though we all saw Najee, and you drove away, played through that, and it was obviously hampering him, or or it it appeared to be hampering him. He, he didn't was, look. He good. was playing with uh, essentially like a piece of metal or so in his shoe to help stabilize the injury. And then at about the, you can see it that just sounded didn't... like it was something he could have taken out of he, the well, shoe, it's like, like, like a pebble in the shoe, but he's just like, I'm leaving right. it in there. Like get it out. Well, he did. And then, <laughs> and then he went back to uh fantasy what he was. Just, I wouldn't greatness is too high of praise, but in the second half of the season, he was, he was back to what you expected from Najee Harris. Yeah, the second half of the season, he averaged 14.2 half PPR fantasy points per game. That's fantastic. He was on pace for over 300 carries, and even though the, the, the targets and the receiving work weren't quite there enough, he would have been on pace for about 50 targets and 30 receptions. This is the area that I think Pickett is going to improve upon. And going into next year, healthy with a better offense, Najee to me is is as high a floor as exists out there and right now in best ball startups he's a fourth round pick and if you're telling me I can get a guy who's going to touch the ball 300 to 350 times in the fourth round I I'm all about that I mean he was the running back four the a season before last year and um, this past season in the second half when he looked good I'll, I'll look up what his rank would have been during that time but it seems like he was back to his usual rookie self. The only thing I'll say is that Jalen Warren is a good player. They, sure. The team made commitments to him over the back half of the year, especially the last four weeks. 
it's you know a little unusual to have another running back in Pittsburgh getting 40 plus percent of the snaps which is what Jalen Warren was kind of dialed in at there was some rumors midseason that there could be a formal change at running back Najee kind of alleviated those and then Warren got hurt as well I wonder what's your guys long-term outlook for Najee because you have like availability in the NFL is an ability you know per the coaches and he has played every single game I look at him like they've appeared Mar in every single game but sub four yards per attempt both seasons now I look at him like David Montgomery same type of uh, kind of talent base uh, reliable runner uh, not going to have uh, breakaway runs but is going to get into the end zone uh, and but do you feel like the Steelers will at this point I mean we're projecting but do you feel like the Steelers are going to ride out his whole contract or do you feel like another year of this where he is durable but the performance on the field isn't exactly what you would hope for I mean you're not you're not getting huge you're not getting a ton of chunk plays from Najee Harris. You're getting inefficient work. He's good at catching the ball, but do you just keep going to that over and over and over when you have someone like Jalen Warren who, when he's on the field, is absolutely electric? It will depend on how much offense they need to generate and how well the quarterback's playing. They're not better than Cincinnati. I don't think they'll be better than Baltimore with Lamar. I think Cleveland's going to be very good. And success determines transition. So do I think that there's a potential risk? I mean, you, you had conversations in the middle of last year about a transition of running back. But overall, I think they'll probably stick with Najee Harris because I think he's their best running back. Yeah, ironically, when Jalen Warren started getting more involved towards the end of the year, 40%, 34 40 42% of snaps, that was at the same time that Najee was actually doing very well. Uh, for fantasy purposes, I looked that up. The the last nine games of the season, the second half of the season, Najee was the running back five. So if you just take out, you know, obviously he sucked the first half of last year. If that was the injury, if that was the metal plate, if that, um, you know, which which coincides with when he was thinking, I I view him as as a value. That's that's my outlook. He's just too well rounded. I love the David Montgomery comp. Not sexy. Not the number one running back out there, but really, really solid, super involved in the team. And obviously the Steelers are a better offense than what we've seen from the Bears over the most of David Montgomery's career. Yeah, if this team has to reset at quarterback, we're not going to be happy with any of the offensive producers. George Pickens, um, anybody like that. If they make a step forward, we'll, be, we'll see a, a light at the end of the tunnel. At eight, Derrick Henry. The Yeti at eight. Uh, Mike, you've got him the highest. Jason, the lowest. I'm right in the middle again. Best ball ADP right now is the RB9 for Derrick Henry, who is now 29 years old. And yet, I think we all know what Derrick Henry's uh, capable of. 1,500 yards, 13 rushing touchdowns, 400 through the air. Been a top four fantasy running back in three or four seasons. 33 receptions this year. Yeah, or this past year. Yeah, this past year, which that's delightful. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't really have any of those other guys to catch the ball. <laughs> what do they call them? Wide receivers? Yeah, is it? That's fair. Um, there's a lot of age and wear and tear. Derrick Henry at eight feels a little bit like like you guys are wrong. Well, yeah, <laughs> like Nick Chubb's situation last year where he went around eight, and yet. Everyone was like, why didn't I take Nick Chubb? Like, the first half of last year was a bunch of people saying, why didn't I just take the guy I know is really good at playing football? Yep. Um, I am guessing this ADP is age plus situation, right? The, the Tennessee Titans, could they trade up for a, a brand-new quarterback? Could, could they end up in the doldrums of nobody at quarterback for a while? There are just questions right now, and uh, they fired their offensive coordinator because they weren't happy with what happened. So, Derrick Henry's range of outcomes. Does he still have top three potential? Yeah. I mean, he's still got top three potential. It, it feels silly where, you know, I've got him at 10 right now. Um, I happen to have quite a few shares in best ball because when he drops to that running back nine, I'm like, man, Derrick Henry's output, his top end potential. If you want to win a league, if you want to finish in first place, Derrick Henry has been over the last two, three years just about the best running back for fantasy 
obviously got injured during the the playoffs a couple of years ago, but he's just been so good. And the question is, is it over? Because the the issue when you draft Derrick Henry is very boom bust. I don't see a world where he is ever the running back twenty uh, on a, on a on a per game basis where he's just an RB two. He's going to be a dominant top six running back for fantasy until it is over. And when you draft him, whichever year it is, and you're holding the bag where it's like, oh, he aged out, the wear and tear caught up. It happens with all of these guys. You know, you that's remember, a huge bag, by the way. That is a yeah. big, that is a 250-pound bag. <laughs> you got that over your shoulder, you're going nowhere. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just a matter of gut check at your draft where you're saying, I believe he is this monstrous outlier of a man who will keep going at a, you know, at an older age because he's always just continued he's to 29. do that. Twenty nine, you know, and and right now, if I had to bet, is he going to be good this year? I, I would bet that he would be good this year. So I, I guess I'm in, despite where I have him ranked. That that's where I am. I have I will go one more season with confidence if we have what I would expect, which is another dominant year again. Finished as the running back four in just 16 games. 2021, he he finished as the running back 16, appearing in eight games. <laughs> he played less than half of the season, and he was a top 16 fantasy running back. I I think there will be enough left for, for this year. Next year, we're, I mean, we can have those conversations, but I'm, I'm going to push the chips in for, for one more round, one more ride here. Like uh, much like the the Indiana Jones here, mm. we got the last one coming out. We're hoping it's good, so that we can close on a bang. That's that's how I look at Derrick Henry's season. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope he has more athleticism than Harrison Ford at this stage of his career. I would, yeah, I'd bet on it. Um, <laughs> all right, this this is where I, it gets interesting because I want to debate specifically the next two players against each other right after this. So at seven, we have Josh Jacobs, defending rushing leader. And at six, we have the promising rookie of last year going into his second year, Kenneth Walker the third for Seattle. Um, uh, this is where I want to have an interesting discussion because Josh Jacobs last year, we know the resume, 340 for almost, uh, what, six, he, we went for over 1,600 yards, 12 rushing touchdowns. More impressively, caught 53 passes, um, finished at RB3, and then Kenneth Walker, we all see the juice. We see the potential for Kenneth Walker finish at RB16. I have Josh Jacobs at four. I have him ahead of Kenneth Walker. Both of you have put Kenneth Walker. Uh, I have actually, him back no, to Mike, back. Actually, no, Mike, you have him back to back. Okay. So I'm not alone here. I want to kind of understand maybe the argument and path for Kenneth Walker over Josh Jacobs because the Raiders brought Jacobs back. He's going to get paid over $10 million this year. Um, coaching staff's the same, uh, obviously a new quarterback, but to me, watch your eyeballs told you about Josh Jacobs last year. And we were all, a lot of people were wrong about Josh Jacobs going into the season. I think the Raiders were wrong. Yes, I think the were. Raiders thought it wouldn't be a season like Josh Jacobs had. And then all of a sudden he was their entire offense. And, um, you know, he had 404 opportunities as a running back. And so I kind of want to understand because of his pass catching ability, Versus what we saw out of Kenneth Walker. Like, I, I think we'd all bet on Jacobs having more receptions. Yes. Um, I guess I, I don't understand the case for Walker above him, despite how fun it is to watch Kenneth Walker play. Because I think Jacobs catches more passes. I think he has more total opportunities on the year. We have a little bit of a history of Seattle mixing it up at running back. So, Jason, talk to us about why you like Walker significantly more. You have him at four, Jacobs down at eight. Yeah, so Jacobs had just an unbelievable season. And I firmly, and I don't think this is even a, a take, think that last year will be the best career year of Josh Jacobs. He'll never be as good. He was 4.9 a carry, um, had 340 carries, 1,653 yards, just an outlandish season. You look at the, the previous two years, you know, this was his fourth year in the league. And his previous two years, sub four, a carry on average, um, wasn't really that 
crazy performance we saw last year. Now, I don't think Josh Jacobs has lost a step. I do think he will catch the ball more than Kenneth Walker, but I like the youth of Kenneth Walker, the fact that we saw him once, and in his first showing as a rookie, keep in mind the first month of the season, he wasn't really involved that much. He wasn't the dude. That was still, you know, was Rashad, Rash yeah. Rashad Penny was dominating. And if you look at once he took over, he was a 300 carry, 1400 yard pace player in his rookie season. So I like the youth and the arrow kind of pointing up versus the question mark of was this last season from Jacobs more of an outlier. Um, obviously in the draft, I think both of these teams could add a running back to make it a little bit murkier and, and my rankings could change after that. But if we were to go with depth charts kind of as they are right now, I see the Seattle Seahawks offense being better than the Raiders, um, without Derek Carr, you know, and, and, uh, without Darren Waller. So scoring opportunities might be a little bit higher. They're, they're very close. I'm not in love with Walker and against Josh Jacobs by any means. But if I was staring them down, you know, at the same pick, I, I would lean Walker. Now, I think I need to turn it to Brooksy because, Brooksy, you, you never wavered on Josh Jacobs coming into the season. Kind of had a breakout uh, career year, obviously, at 25 years old. Is it going to stay the same for Josh Jacobs? Are you as bullish this year as you were last year? Definitely. I mean, it sucks his – Draft cost is going to go way higher, but I think he can put up similar numbers. I don't. I guess I don't. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I, I, I'm actually surprised at where he is at best in best ball leagues right now. It um, he he's back behind Brees Hall, Nick Chubb, Kenneth Walker, Bijan. Um, I think a lot of people taking that view of like, look, it's always hard to believe that a play player. There's two options for Josh Jacobs. It was an anomaly year, and he reduced goes back down. Or it's a new standard. We had these same conversations about Derrick Henry, right? First three years in the league, then he has a breakout year, and then we're all going, is this the new normal or is this not? And that's what's going to um, make or break Josh Jacobs for this year. Sure. I, I would say the I mean, the difference. But I'm trusting the eyeballs of, of saying that is a different football right. player than we saw the years I mean, before. Derrick Henry was sitting behind DeMarco Murray before he got his opportunity. Josh Jacobs had his opportunity immediately, and – I, th I think that it's part of where we are right now with Josh Jacobs is the entirety of the story that you have to go back and remember. Josh Jacobs was a first-round pick, which was a, a little surprising at the time. He was, you know, everyone, not everyone, but the majority of, of people out there, the, the number one running back on the board, you know, coming out of, of uh, Alabama, and we were excited for Josh Jacobs. And then he got the first round draft capital, and he was the running back eighteen, and it was disappointing. That's that's a good fantasy football year, only thirteen games to be a top twenty running back, but it was it was disappointing. And then he just kind of kept being good, just not great. What he was he was not meeting the expectations. So then to have a true breakout season in year four, year four for a running back to do this when they've had three years of opportunities is strange, and I. To me, that's why I'm I'm hesitant of like, how do you jump from fr from you know basically 300 opportunities a year to over 400? Your efficiency marks go crazy. You're better than you've ever been, and Last that that was, not just being an outlier. Year. That was Josh McDaniel's first season as head coach. Yes, yes, it was. That was that's the big change to it's, me. That's it's where funny. if you wanted to say this is going to be the new norm, it's because well, this was a new system he was playing in with a new coach that decided to give him the ball 404 times. So I, Normally when you see that many opportunities, you don't see the efficiency increase. That's what I'm, that's so that's where scary it's, about that's it. That's where it's like when I watched him on the field, and I, I, I put my whatever dynasty money where my mouth is. Like I went out and pursued Josh Jacobs on purpose because I think he's undervalued, which, look, everybody doesn't think that. Otherwise, I couldn't have got him. His story is so complicated, like yes. you said, because – He's been a top 20 running back all four years of his career. He's been in the top 10 before. Last year was just the year where he went into a new category and tier where people don't know if he's going to be there. Yeah, it's really the opportunities. If he, if you know for sure he's going to get the same opportunities, then there's no way he's not a top six fantasy back, even if he's a little bit less efficient. Uh, one other fear that is worth mentioning right now is not that they go and add another running back in the draft, but that they actually use the draft capital that they've been rumored 
uh, you know, trading up from seven or even at seven, grabbing someone like Will Levis. That would be, you know, if, if Will Levis g- gets drafted by the Raiders, then that means that Jimmy Garoppolo is probably going to play half the season, and at some point they're going to make the change to Will Levis, and that will be bad for the offense, bad for the, the whole fantasy output of, of the Raiders, Thoughts in my opinion. Thoughts on calling him Elvis? Will, 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 Levis? Will Levis? Yeah, it just kind of sounds like... Will, I like I like just botching his name, calling him Levi's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's not a lot of positivity around <laughs> Will Levis. Not, not from not from the dynasty community. The NFL still really sweaty, Re- real sweaty to get Levis on that team. He just feels it feels like every year there needs. To, it's like the fantasy community needs a Zach Wilson to hate. Yes, and it feels like he was nominated for that. I Which, saw- by the way, he is in the fit and form of a Josh Cutler. I mean, he is ready to come into the league. Josh Cutler? Are you combining? Or Jay Cutler. We're just mashing people together. But to to be fair to the Dynasty community, the Dynasty community, we weren't big fans of Mitchell Trubisky when that happened. We weren't huge fans of Zach Wilson when that happened. The NFL does get some things wrong, and – I mean, there, there's a lot of us. Like we are, we're the crowd source. Mm-hmm. They're the, they are grant. They are the experts. They are the ones who literally their paycheck is determined. Are are you good enough to locate who the good players are? But there's there's millions of us watching it, going, mm, 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 that's he, not the guy. He can't see a pass rush. I I, I know that the <laughs> now we're back. To, we're gonna keep it going. We're just gonna kill Levis. Well, I'm I, Elvis. Elvis. No. Thank, thank you. Um. I, I saw a report they uh, approved a new helmet for concussions for quarterbacks. Is that, yes, that, that is that true. Happened? And it, it actually dents. So that will be interesting if they use it. it, it it's supposed to reduce concussions when you hit the ground by 7% over the current models. Okay. But part of, part of the effect is the, the exterior shell will dent a little bit. So like a car, so, like we have a crumple zone? Right. So we will visually. That makes a lot of sense. I think we will visually see it and we'll. You know, you see crumple, you think bad, right? But they will actually be better for the players. I I hope part of that new, you know, helmet is like in the visor. Maybe show your peripheral because <laughs> Will Levis has no peripheral vision whatsoever, and that would really help him a lot, protect him. On to Kenneth Walker or to continue the discussion on Kenneth Walker. Jason at four, me at six, Mike at eight. We all like him a lot. I think um, Rashad Penny is gone. Had a great rookie season. There was a, a tiny lull. Um, yeah. That, you know, if you watch the games, you noticed it uh, kind of from week 13 on. I mean, he burst onto the scene. He got hurt, though. Yeah, the first uh, – but he got hurt twice. And that's another thing worth discussing when you contrast and compare these players. That's one area where, um, you know, Josh Jacobs has been pretty healthy. He played all of last year. Oh, you remember last year he got injured. He did the pump fake. And every yeah. time he got injured, they oh, yeah. gave him more work. They, they just they, they were like, this is how we heal you. Yeah, it was unbelievable. <laughs> He's like hobbled, and they're just like, give him the ball again. So Walker, I think we know, is an electric player. You're going to have big plays with Kenneth Walker. You You hope that you could see his targets go up, and you also hope this team doesn't do what I think it's going to do, which is – you know, find some peripheral support at running back for Kenneth Walker because um, came into the year injured, got hurt once during the year. They've had years of dealing with Rashad Penny's injuries, and because of how foundational the running game is in a Pete Carroll offense, I doubt that they're going to want to go into the season and say, hey, it's DJ Dallas behind Kenneth Walker, end of story. Yeah, that's that's why they're one of the scariest landing spots to me for Bijan Robinson. They have two first round picks. Their second first rounder is at twenty, which is a spot where any team could justify whether it's a need or not, could justify taking someone that's probably top five on their overall player list who's a clear first round pick. Most teams don't have more than fourteen, fifteen first round graded players, and you know every team <clears throat> has him graded as a first rounder. If you're at twenty with your second first rounder, you lost Rashad Penny. You had some injuries. I could easily see them pulling the trigger. I think it would be good for them as a franchise, but for fantasy football purposes, that is where was Walker that taken? Is awful. Second, Second round? round. I mean, that would be quite the yes, it would redundancy for the for Seattle to go 
first round Rashad Penny, second round Kenneth Walker, back to a first round pick. But it's not out of out of out of the realm of possibility. It uh, would be rough. My my hesitation with Walker it is just the pass catching. You have he averaged two point three targets a game, and that's juiced, same quarterback coming back, and that's juiced up by there was a game like an outlier game where he had eight targets. Other than that, you're seeing you know pretty much the two a game. So it, it, it that part concerns me. He definitely overproduced in the touchdown column, but. I mean, that's kind of the, the the profile of who Kenneth Walker is. So I, while I really, really like him, I'm just, you know, talking that Josh Jacobs or Kenneth Walker, I have Jacobs just slightly ahead of Kenneth Walker. I don't know if that means on draft day that I can do that because he's so exciting and so young and you feel like you haven't, you haven't seen the true ceiling of Kenneth Walker while you probably have seen the ceiling of Josh Jacobs. So that that's a very difficult discussion, but and uh, decision between those two guys. The the only other thing to mention is he did have seventeen fifteen plus yard runs, um, which is a obviously a feather that's, that's feather great. in his cap, but also something that can be a little bit variable over time. Tony Pollard comes in at number five. Wow, Tony yeah, Pollard, baby. interestingly enough, half a year older than Josh Jacobs, which doesn't compute in my brain. No, that doesn't. Are we sure about that? Yeah. Well, you have to remember, Josh Jacobs came into the league at 12 years old. <laughs> I mean, he was he was so young when he was drafted. Which uh, maybe something else to be said about the uh, the time it took to become elite. I don't know. Maybe Tony Pollard. He's the best ball RB 11 right now. We all have him higher than that. Uh, he finishes the RB seven in fantasy. This was sharing time with Ezekiel Elliott. This was under 200 carries. Um, I mean, that this is awesome. I mean, Tony Pollard should have a huge opportunity. There was a part of his career before the middle of last year where he had never had 15 rushing attempts in a single game at any level uh, as a running back. So I don't – what I want to know is get get into the head of, of Mr. McCarthy because oh, that's where you want to live. Oh, go there. Um, it's dark. <laughs> is it? I mean, right? like there's no lights on. Okay. Well <laughs> – if we know Zeke's gone, he's had a ton of opportunities over the years. We know McCarthy wants to run the football. They've made the, too many points. Yeah, they were scoring too much, too fast. Now they want to score too much, too slow. Um, how do they possibly go into the season with Tony Pollard and Ronald Jones? Yeah, they they absolutely can't. I would. I mean, I don't even think Ronald Jones will end up on this roster. If he does, whatever, he'll be a third string, fourth string guy. They have to bring someone else in. He can be the running back five right now because as the depth chart stands, you just mentioned it, Andy. He was the running back seven while being the backup running back last year, and he is the clear-cut leader right now. He's the only main running back they have for a team that wants to run the ball more. He's so explosive, so electric. I would I would expect his efficiency numbers to come down. But we saw him uh, last year with a lot of games with a large opportunity, right? If Zeke was missing time, you know, you have a game of 28 opportunities, 21, 20, 24, lots of games where he and, – and in those games, running back seven, running back one, running back two, running back six, like outstanding performance. I don't think it is out of the realm of possibility that Zeke comes back They've left kind of the door open for that. I don't think, you know, if, if Dalvin Cook were released, that they, you know, he, he could go there. They're going to add another big back, and I, I would be surprised if Tony Pollard stays this high in the rankings. It's just uh, where he is right now. A month from now, but obviously we know his potential. He is an outstanding talent. When you guys were talking on the Dynasty show about specifically Jameer Gibbs and uh, Devon A. Chain, this was the – one of the examples of a player with fewer opportunities historically that made a big mark that came to mind where Tony Pollard was kind of, he's been living in second fiddle land, but still been good for fantasy when you wanted to play him. That's what you would kind of hope you could get out of those smaller backs. Well, it, Tony Pollard has been an often comp for uh, Jameer Gibbs because you're talking about someone who's really good in the pass game, very fast, electric and smaller. And then you have to remember that, um, Tony Pollard weighed He's in not at, small. He weighed yeah. in at 210 pounds at the draft. So when we're talking about this 200 pound weight threshold, it's like, yeah, he cleared it by 10. He's yeah. and we call him small. 
Right. Tony Pollard's a small back, is you know, <laughs> but he's not. Yeah. No, I. It, he's just smaller than Zeke was. Um, Jonathan Taylor comes in at four. Last year, Jonathan Taylor was your number one pick in fantasy drafts, uh, or at least a lot of them. Not ours. Yeah. Um, 24 years old, 192 carries, injury-riddled season, 28 receptions. Um, I think we know that Jonathan Taylor has number one overall potential. But new coach, new quarterback, possibly a rookie. I think that there are some question marks around this offense. We've seen the retreads come through at quarterback for Indianapolis for a while. And the retreads have not been great. But at times, they have at least been able to move the, the offense. So you do run the risk of a rookie coming in and maybe, um, like Mike, do you view Jonathan Taylor as a better or worse fantasy asset if it's an Anthony Richardson? Worse. Okay. De definitely worse. You Because we have the, the history of the numbers. One, rookie, wide, uh, rookie quarterback not moving the offense. Two, Anthony Richardson is a developmental quarterback who if if he comes in week one for whatever team he gets drafted by and he just like holy crap it's it's already there that will be very shocking to me and then if, if it's Anthony Richardson on the Colts mobile quarterbacks they run every single time a quarterback scrambles and runs that's a check down that has now been taken away from the running back position so he's he is extremely difficult because he's so so good do not forget the two years ago, don't forget what he did on the field. Just a dominant force for the NFL, dominant for fantasy football. So that still exists. And I don't think that – don't let the the downturn of the offense completely take you off of, of Jonathan Taylor because he's that good that he can carry. It just – I don't it, – it would take a lot for him to get back into that elite number one status. I, I I was just going to say, like, where where are you with the offensive line? Because I think that was the actual problem last year in a lot of ways for Indianapolis. I mean, you have you had Desmond Ritter getting snaps in Atlanta, and the Atlanta running game was great. Desmond Ritter was not great. Um, you also had other situations like Malik Willis getting starts in Tennessee. The running game was bad with Malik Willis at quarterback, and you had to manage him so much. It, it, this offensive line disappointed, if I recall, last year compared yeah. to what it came into the season as. To me, it might come – sometimes the quarterback might be more window dressing there. You know, do you agree with that? Do oh, you, for sure. I mean, the offensive line going into last year, you thought that was a strength of the team. Then it turned out to be a weakness. Um, they, they've got to address that in the draft if they can. Um but I am in on Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I think that the real issue for Jonathan Taylor, yes, the offensive line was an issue, but you've seen running backs with bad offensive lines and running backs with good offensive lines, uh, you know, be good for fantasy football. My concern was the injury. He had this lingering ankle injury the whole year, even after the season was still dealing with this. Uh, and if he's healthy coming back, he, he's, uh, to me, a top six. He's, like, locked in as – he's just so good. He's a Derrick Henry caliber athlete on the field, and he still had, you know, he had a week where he was the running back two, the running back one, massive performances, just couldn't keep that ankle healthy. And I've been seeing him a lot of the times at the, the one-two turn, the very back of the oh, first round, and when he falls to the – 10th 11th 12th pick that's where I'm scooping him up and I feel good about it yeah you should that's a steal Saquon at three comes back on the franchise tag last year 1300 yards on the ground 10 rushing touchdowns uh 57 receiving uh or receptions and then not a lot of yards 338 through the air that was uh who was the running back we talked about on the last show that was a had 50 plus receptions, but a ridiculous 30 or 300 something yards. Was it Aaron Jones? I think it was. I'll, yeah, I'll where look. it was, I mean, 338 receiving yards is a. Yeah, 59 for 395. Yeah, this is a low number on 57 receptions. He did finish as the RB6. I, I think the Giants are going to be a competitive football team that, if I had to bet on it, I think they're going to end up above 500. Sure. So that's one of the reasons I have Saquon ranked so high. Um, 
Very few players get to play every every down. Saquon gets to do that. Still an elite talent, but the clock is running out, I think, on Saquon in terms of predictability. Yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously still young enough where you're not saying, oh, he's he's aging out and going to be inefficient. Um, we do see that peak peak running back performance by age is usually around 24. And that's not to say that you're bad at 27, but it's to say you're not at your absolute peak, uh, you know, the apex of, of your career. You look at the targets that he had last year, and, and like you said, Andy, he didn't do much with them. It was very very inefficient under six yards of reception which is pretty terrible but he had a ton of targets oh he was back finally to being the Saquon Barkley that got over 70 targets and that's what you want to see but you got to keep in mind how unbelievably putrid their depth chart was at wide receiver there was not a lot of great options to throw the ball to and this was the first time we've seen Saquon with Daniel Jones really soak up those uh, checkdowns. So I think it's going to be somewhere in between this next year where you're, I, I don't think he is plus 70 targets again, um, but hopefully the efficiency comes up and, and makes it fine. He's a, he's a good pick because you know he's got the goal line, he's got the receiving work, and he's a talented three-down back. Um but I, yeah, I, I, I'm not excited. As in, I think that he's going to be uh, just, a, you know, a top three running back. I, I don't see that in the range of outcomes personally. Interestingly enough, number two is Austin Eckler, who also wasn't that efficient in the receiving game. He had the same, I think, yards per catch or uh, at Saquon, but he caught 107 of them, mm -hmm. not 57. 127 targets in the offense. He's kind of come out and said, "Hey, I'm probably back in." Los Angeles for another year. Good luck chasing the bag at almost 29 years old, Austin. You probably get it. But, um, you know, last year it started with trepidation. Yes. This show, you know, Jason had invested an early pick on Austin Eckler. He was shaking in his boots, and then he won the title with those boots. So Thank you, Austin. Austin Eckler was the running back one. Last year. Also the running back one in week 17 championship week. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> Red zone monster for two straight years. Red zone touchdowns had 16 of them tied with Jamal Williams for the lead. More red zone touchdowns in the last two years than Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb combined. Ooh. So when they're down there, Austin is yelling very loudly for the ball. I don't know if you heard that, but he just screamed, Justin! <laughs> Justin, Justin, Justin! Screaming like uh, yeah. DeMar DeRozan's daughter oh, at the NBA oh, that was, game. That was funny. That's so Elite. Screaming like all the all the kids on my son's basketball team at 11 years old, where they are all Every, just, Everybody's open. Everybody, <laughs> oh they my just God, yell yes. the name of the kid with the ball. Yeah. That's all they do. It's, Cody, 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 Cody! At first, my, my son is playing basketball, same, same age, and, you know, same type of basketball, and... At first, I was very impressed that he knew all of his teammates' names <laughs> so quickly, and then I realized why. It's yeah. like, oh, it's because you have to know whose name to shout when they are touching that orange thing. Austin Eckler, is there is there downside here with Austin Eckler? Uh, you guys have him both at number two. I actually put him at five uh, in part because, look, this red zone efficiency is insane. I know it's two years in a row. Also, does this team start to make plans in some fashion for the future at the running back position? Because Austin Eckler... They gave him permission to seek a trade this offseason. Because they knew <laughs> that he wouldn't get one. They knew what the answer would be. But again, that's a that's not one of those like, you know, I don't tell my best friends to seek a trade. Well, they didn't tell him to seek a trade. They gave him permission. He yeah. asked if he could seek a trade. They wanted a contract extension, and they couldn't come to terms. So that then he said, well, can we look for a trade? And yeah. they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. And um, So he, then no contract extension, though. I mean, there, there's obviously a difference in opinion of his value by this organization. Certainly. I think it's just the positional value. The NFL is not going to pay running backs probably ever again, and it sucks to be a running back, but that's the world they're living in. In the meantime, you can also make the argument that he is in a contract year again. He's betting on himself so that he can go out and sign something big, one last contract before he retires. And from the vantage of the Chargers, they don't need to worry about the long-term wear and tear on Austin Eckler. They're going to, you know, get as much juice out of 
the squeeze as they can, and I think that they'll they'll give him the ball a ton and not worry about the ramifications. So I like Austin a lot this next year. The, the inefficiency in the receiving game was certainly a, a problem this year, but it hasn't been over the last several, 9.2 yards per reception, 7.5, 10.8. I mean, he's always been one of the best pass-catching backs in the league, so I'm not worried about that. And when you've got a guy who's able to catch the ball 100 times, it's really hard to have him not as the number one running back, but but then the number one running back can do that too. Chargers have the 21st pick, so you talked about the 20s, the Bijan zone. They also have 54 you know, if they took a Gibbs A chain type of player that could eat into his receptions, but he's been kind of impervious. Number one, we all got him there, Christian McCaffrey. I do think that San Francisco Christian McCaffrey, who, by the way, last year, 1,100 yards, eight rushing touchdowns, 85 receptions, five uh, receiving touchdowns. I do think San Francisco version of Christian McCaffrey has a slightly bigger variance in terms of. It could just not be his game. It could be a game where Elijah Mitchell comes in and happens to burst through the line for the touchdowns. Um, when Elijah Mitchell came back, it was a little bit less Christian McCaffrey. We also know he was managing some injuries. They invested in him. He's number one for a reason. I'm just trying to find some reason to to not like Christian McCaffrey, but there aren't really any of them. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, you're not going to dislike Christian McCaffrey. He's unbelievable. He's talented in every facet of the game. He has been invested in. Even throwing the ball. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, better than Jimmy G. I'm looking at these game logs, and they're just ridiculous. They are ridiculous, but if you want to find the red flag, it is the Elijah Mitchell issue. Elijah Mitchell was there for only four weeks when uh, the, when Christian McCaffrey got to the team, and during those four weeks, it, Christian wasn't bad. You know, 15 fantasy points, 14 fantasy points. One of the his his worst games, 6.9 uh, fantasy points. Not that nice. No. Um, th those were when Elijah Mitchell was active, and then you know the, his those games where Elijah Mitchell was injured, and it was all Christian McCaffrey, and the snaps weren't what you we what you saw when Elijah Mitchell was there was 65 percent, 66 percent, 63 percent of the snaps. Elijah Mitchell gets injured, and all of a sudden it's 82 percent 89 percent running back one running back two running back five like those were the monstrous performances and so I I do worry that the peak extreme upside that you hope for in Christian McCaffrey isn't going to be realized unless another injury happens to his running back mates yeah I just think you're going to have a uh, I would say three or four games this year where you're like oh that wasn't that wasn't a McCaffrey yeah, game. Yeah, what the heck, that's not McCaffrey? What you, that's not what you've uh, come to expect. But Running back 14? But let's not pretend Elijah Mitchell's not getting hurt. That's a good point. I mean, or losing a depth chart battle because that's just what Shanahan manages to do. So uh, McCaffrey rounds out our top 10 countdown here at the running back position. And uh, look, things are going to change quite a bit. But yeah. it's it's nice to well, get a lay of the land. Like Bijan absent from this list of top 20 he will be in this list of the top 20 no question no question so um Bijan is currently the running back four in best ball <laughs> oh man so he is he is ahead of Saquon <laughs> people Kenneth are Walker, thirsty Brees Hall so there Kenny thirsty. Josh Jacobs yeah I just don't know what to do with that information <laughs> I don't know what to do with it just let them be excited I, I know what to do with it it's not draft him right now <laughs> I mean, genuinely, like I love Bijan, but the like there's not all the landing spots are running back four worthy. You're I mean, I feel like you should draft Brees Hall over Bijan. Sure. Like I just don't like like you know they're going to have Aaron Rodgers. He's ahead of schedule. He's proven it at the NFL level. He can catch the football. I mean, his Bijan had games where he was barely. Or, sorry, sorry, Brees. Not Brees, Sean, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which man. is your yes. backfield and dynasty. <laughs> that should be back my, that should be my uh, dynasty name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brees, But no, I don't know. I think Brees is like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> the the Bijan hype is, is madness. So I don't even know what I want to see happen in the NFL draft for that. Well, do we're you, two weeks away. Oh, gosh. Delightful. It's the Bijan <laughs> Minute, yeah. Please don't go to the Seattle Seahawks.
Yeah, we'll find oh out where he's gosh. going soon. And we'll record Jason watching it. So. Although, a uh, big shout out to, I, I I don't remember your name, but there was someone on. <laughs> huge uh, shout out to. Huge shout out to, to Anonymous. This, to, a, to Anonymous. John Doe. But uh, t- t- tagged me and Mike and said, hey, I got a ha- you should make a happiness hedge <laughs> for the uh, Bijan to Seattle. Oh. So I'll, I'll, thank you. Because that if that happens, I can't be too upset. Oh, it was it's like make a little. Uh, it's plus 10,000. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. Which uh, is nice. who, who's the odds on favorite for Bijan then? If they if that's a I Kyle, believe, I believe the odds on favor is uh the Washington Manders. Oh, I could see that. <laughs> Just we need more. We need more and more. Come on, backs. Atlanta. Atlanta. You got another team to bet a few you're gonna be happiness hedging about yeah. you, your <laughs> your ten worst destinations. Well the the problem Why not? With, the problem with the happiness hedge, like like I would be upset with, you know, Bijan going to the Manders. But they're not good odds. Those are the the you know those are the strongest odds to draft Bijan. So it just so happened that the Seattle landing spot is like betting wise. You have to feel impossible. good about that then. Oh yeah, I'm kind of like there's a part of me that's like all right, let's go to Seattle. <laughs> let's just get let's just win the. Bet. How happy do you want to be? Yeah. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you follow the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. That way, when we have new episodes, they uh, show up in your pocket. Thanks a lot for listening. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.